You know, we actually have no idea what's going to happen in this election. It's an unprecedented election with over 1,300 independents standing. No opinion poll has any idea how to deal with the, the independents. The Labour Party certainly has no idea how to deal with the independents. So in order to ignore me, Ken Loach, who came canvassing with us yesterday, asked the question that I think we should all ask. Where the hell is Keir Starmer? <laughs> why, why isn't he standing up and debating those of us standing against him? Ken's view, which you know, I don't know whether I share or not, is that he's too scared. Because the questions we have to ask him are questions he has no answer to. These include how a former human rights lawyer does not have enough humanity to call for an unqualified ceasefire in Gaza. How a former human rights lawyer does not have the humanity to demand a halt to all British arms sales, which are illegal, to Israel. Arms that are being used to slaughter innocent Palestinians. So that's why we haven't seen Keir Starmer in the constituency. Because in Holborn and St Pancras and in Camden, we ask the tough questions. Unfortunately, our MP avoids them. Some of you might know, and if you hear today, I'm assuming you know. I once worked for a guy called Nelson Mandela. <laughs> I might have mentioned this. <laughs> Your dad wasn't a toolmaker, was <laughs> David Lammy, speaking at a Republican Party gathering in the United States of America. Let me repeat that. A Republican Party gathering. But at this Republican Party event, he has the audacity, the ignorance, the mendacity to say that Nelson Mandela would not endorse the actions of the millions of extraordinary, courageous students who are camping on their campuses across the United States of America, across the United Kingdom, across Western Europe. So let me quickly tell you something. When Nelson Mandela first came out of jail, before he was our country's president, he went to the United States and he came to the United Kingdom. And a key reason he did that is specifically to thank the students who had had encampments for years in support of the struggle against apartheid in South Africa. But to bring the point home, we are really, really fortunate this morning to have with us the wonderful, brave person who was selected as a consequence of the most incredible community process in Tottenham. It was amazing. There were hundreds and hundreds of people there, divided into their wards, sitting there, desperate to elect a great local person to stand against the shameful David Lammy. And now what we have is a caricature called David Lammy, who works only for himself, who says that it's legally justified to bomb a refugee camp, who says he's a small C conservative. These are things that he has self-confessed. He has more extra jobs than any other MPs. We went, we uh, demonstrated uh, outside his LBC studio in central London. And he didn't come out to speak to us. We've demonstrated in front of Bernie Grant's art center twice. He hasn't come out to speak to us. He is invisible. <laughs> so that's why I'm standing, because Tottenham is deeply anti-racist anti-war, anti-austerity, anti-imperialism. 67% of the population in Tottenham is BME or, or non-white. And if David Lamy wants to continue his NATO-loving, US-loving, Republican-loving ways, he has to go 
and search for another constituency. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Not in London, not in London. We have to ensure that the people of Tottenham understand what is at stake. We want to see not just Jeremy Corbyn yeah. defeating a Labour candidate who has made a fortune out of the privatization of the NHS, everything that Jeremy stands against. We do not just want to see Leanne Mohammed, an extraordinary 23-year-old Palestinian woman defeating Wes Streeting, who wants to privatize wants to privatize every treatment, every brick of our NHS. We want to see Nandita Lal destroying David Lammy in Tottenham. I also think that what has started with Andrew and others like Nandita, and there's, there's plenty of others around the country, is historic. And everyone here is historic because we have in this country had to live with a two-party system for generations and generations and generations. Now, now we know more than ever what this two-party system means because of Gaza. But it's always been the same. With ver there's been the Labour government, various Labour governments have done some good domestic things, but they've always been signed up to the American imperial project. And we don't want to be part of the American imperial project because that is a vicious empire which destroys hope all around the world. And what you're seeing now, and it happens with people that um, aren't even political. I've got friends that aren't political that are speaking in ways that they never spoke before. And whatever happens on July 4th, I'm, I'm not saying the independents won't win. Some of them might, some of them might not. It doesn't matter to me because something has started that this is the start of something historic. This is a breakup of the duopoly. Um, and everyone here, Part of it, you know, we're all part of history here because I think in generations to come we'll look part we'll look at this moment as the moment where the two-party system in Britain broke. So what we need to do now is whatever happens on July 4th is cultivate uh, that new generation um, I, uh, and, and and think about ways where we can really change this country because this is a moment that there's never been, um, and I think it is because of Gaza because we've never had this awareness of how the system works. We knew, we, we had an inkling uh, the, how, of how the system works, but it's all out in the open now. We've had nine months nearly of the most horrific genocide, the most horrific images we've all seen on our phones and um, maybe not the TV so much, but on our phones or social media. And we're looking firstly at the TV and at the newspapers who are not telling the truth. We're cross-referencing what we're seeing with what we're getting from the mainstream media and thinking, well, and this is a general thing, this isn't just activists they're thinking, OK, well, they're lying to us. And then they're looking at the, the, the TV and seeing Keir Starmer and Rishi Sunak, both mainstream parties, supporting everything to the hill. And that is having a huge impact across the country, this country, America, everywhere. We are here to win this. <laughs> get rid of Keir Starmer. And we have it within our power to do what the vast majority of people in Britain want. They want a non-Tory government, but they want one that isn't led by the Tory light Keir Starmer. And we can deliver that.